What's up, good people? Welcome to another Better with Paul. And I'm so happy because just seconds before we went live, I did a sound check and a, <laughs> and a video check with the guests. They are here. You know, can I just say this real quick before we begin is as I, I'm, I, I think the beauty right now is that almost all of us now are creating content and a lot of us are interviewing other guests, which I think is phenomenal. Like I love the diversity of conversation. And I will also say that you will know that the most stressful part of any type of interview is just ensuring that your guests, <laughs> right? That your guests are, are here, right? They're in the building, they're connected and that their audio works and that you could see them. Check, check and check. So we're good. We're good. That's that's all I have to that's all I have to say. We're good. All right. So let me say some quick what's ups now. I have to say a special what's I see, I see everybody. I see I see Facebook. I see LinkedIn. Oh my gosh, LinkedIn is really popping right now. LinkedIn. What's up, Jacqueline Darden? What's up, Tinsley Bradford, who's an author? My man Kit Yang, the Harvard business coach, is in the building. Kit Yang. What's up, my man? Veronica Sanders, Maxwell, Rita Hendricks. And then of course, I've got to go right here because I see my man Sebastian's throwing up Jamaica all day. That's all I see. I see my sis Kim. I see Linda. I see Tony. I see the whole crew. I see my man Jam Jamal. I see everybody. I just want to say this. There was a question. So one, two is today I'm getting right to the subject matter today. And the reason why is because our guests, we're like, we're, we're bringing out big guns, bringing out big guns. And there's a lot of subject matter that we have to cover. And so therefore I wanna go right into it. I'm not gonna give a, you know, a big story at the top, but I have to say this, let me find this little comment in here. Cause this, this one really made me feel good. And I have to say this right here. This is Marsha Ann Donaldson. She's saying, hey, Paul, every Monday and Friday is like a surprise. You amaze us. How do you elevate session after session that made me just feel good. Like I'm good. I don't care if no one else watches today. Like I'm just good. Uh, but let me just answer this a little bit. Cause the question is like, how do we keep getting better? Cause I feel like we're getting better. When I look at the stats, when I look at the engagement, when I look at the questions that are coming in, I see it's, it continues to climb week after week. The last two weeks we've been averaging collectively almost 40,000 views across all of the platforms, which is which I think is incredible given that we started at about two or 3,000. And this is just about four weeks in. Here's something that I do, and I encourage you all to think about this, to consider this as you are developing your content. That is, we've talked often about the avatar, right? Your customer avatar. In this case, Marsha Ann Donaldson Brown, which by the way, that's a very Jamaican name, by the way, Marsha and Donaldson Brown. Jamaicans always have at least five or six names in their name. So there you go, you know she's Jamaican. Uh, what really, what I believe is that she, Marsha and, and Donaldson Brown, get it correct, right? Um, is the avatar. Marsha Ann, you're the avatar. And what I do often is after these sessions are over, I watch the entire session on LinkedIn and I watch it on Facebook and I'm not watching it for me, right? Uh, I've already heard the guests, although sometimes I go back and take notes on the guests, but in particular, I'm watching the comments. And what I'll look for is I'll look for people who are engaging frequently, right? Often like Marsha and Donaldson Brown. And then what I'll do is I'll go to her page on LinkedIn or I'll go to her page on Facebook or I'll go into heavy stalker mode. A lot of you know how to heavily stalk people. Come on, you do, right? Heavily stalk mode, I'll go to their Instagram, right? I'll go maybe Google them. And what I'll do is I'll try to identify what are the deepest pain points, right? What are the things that Marsha Ann Donaldson Brown is dealing with today? What is she most concerned with? And how can I address that on a future, you know, future session? And this is what I do time and time again. And as a segue to today's topic, this is what I've been doing. And I've seen two things come up in my stalking, all right? One is there's a lot of conversation around book publishing, 
We all know that book sales are up in particular. We talked about the surge of eBooks a few sessions ago. So there's been a lot of conversation around book sales. How do I write a book? How do I publish the book? How do I write a book quickly, right? How do I write a book that's not necessarily a bestseller? I can care less about bestseller. I just want it to be profitable, right? A lot of these questions have popped up. And then also, there've been a lot of questions about multiple streams of income, right? I, you know, I used to joke back in the day, I used to say, okay, because I'm Jamaican, I have 10 streams of income. And I remember about 10 years ago saying, yeah, I, I literally have about 10 streams of income. It was a joke then. 10 years ago, it was a joke. Today, it's so much not a joke. People literally are consuming everything they can now to figure out how they can increase their streams of revenue. And so these are two topics that I honestly thought I was going to cover independent of each other. But it just so happens that we have two guests today that are experienced in both of these topics. And so we're going to merge them together today. We're going to talk about the book process. We're going to talk about how do you write a book? How do you publish a book, right? How do you write and publish a profitable book? And I'll even add quickly, okay? And then secondly, we're going to talk about streams of income. How can we take that book, create lots of streams of income? Or if you decide not to publish a book, how can you just right now create multiple streams of income? This is what we're talking about today. And I am super happy. So so, 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 so here's, here's the question. <laughs> I, see, I see the Jamaican comments already. I always have to ask a quick question before we get started. And that is, is where are you watching from? Where are you watching from? I just want to know where are you watching from? I, and you know what I'm looking for. You know what I'm looking for. I'm just looking for one thing. Where are you watching from? Oh, look at this. I see Bermuda living in Manchester. That's what I'm saying. Look at this. Shout out to, to the UK. All right. Let me go to LinkedIn. Let me go to LinkedIn because I know LinkedIn. All right. So I see I see just Caribbeans, folks representing the, the, the Caribbean. I see, I see Canada. I see St. Louis uh, on the board. I see Jamaica. I see my sis Luis is Kansas and Dion Smallhorn is watching from Jamaica. That's all I had to see. That's all I see. Um, look at this, Indianapolis. All right, so let's bring on the guests, okay? Let's bring on the guests. So, you know, I like to do some one-on-one -on -one time first. So the first guest I wanna bring on is someone who I have known for, oh my gosh, how long? I think it is, seven years. You may correct me on this. I think it's it could be six or seven years. This is someone who plays a very special part in my heart because, and I mentioned her before, is right around 2013, 2014, uh, I had just finished the first show that I did with none other than Miss, Miss Oprah Winfrey. And at that time, I didn't get a lot of mainstream press, right? So I, I wasn't getting called by People Magazine, right? I wasn't getting called by, you know, by, by what was considered to be mainstream press. But I got an email from the editor of Lady Brill Magazine, right? Lady Brill, fashion magazine for women. And they said, hey, you know, Paul, we like what you stand for. We want to put you on the cover of our magazine and you will be the first male to be on the cover of our magazine. And I can't tell you how much that meant to me. It, you know, if people had called me that same day and said, Paul, we want you to be, I would say people who, right? To me, to be acknowledged, and in particular, I always say to be acknowledged from your community uh, in an innovative way is something that I will never, ever forget. And so I want to bring on not only was she the editor of Lady Bro, but she's, you know, a fashion, she was a model, right? She's deep in the fashion industry, an attorney. Uh, I think it is brilliant how she's merged law and fashion. Uh, and by the way, not just in the United States, but all throughout the world, a lot of, lot of, lot of pressure that she's putting in Africa right now with regard to fashion. I want to bring on none other and miss Uduak. Here she is. Hey, Paul, how are you? Hi, everyone. How are you doing? There you go. Can I, here. 
I, I have to continue to say thank you. Oh. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was, uh, you know, I looked up in my email. Do you know what year it was? I thought it was 2010. But yeah. Yeah. 2010. Yeah. That's what I thought it was. I thought it was 2010. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Because yeah. it was a first major issue putting a guy on and it was it was fantastic. Um, yeah. It was fantastic. And um, I really liked I think I had sent Niama Sandy to come to your home and cover. It was yeah. Good coverage. And oh my really well done. And then you both became friends, really good friends. Yes, I didn't even oh my I didn't even connect it. It was Niama that you sent over. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yeah, Niama was like my sister at the time. Wow. Look at that. Yeah. Connecting people. Well, yeah. thank you. Thank you very much for that. Um there there's there's so much, obviously, that you know, so much expertise, so much that you could cover. But just right now at the top, just to give everyone a feel, right? of your streams of income. Could you just paint that picture? What are your streams of income? And then just what's the, the cliff note, right? The real quick summary of how you were able to assemble all of those streams. Okay, before I go any further, you know, Jamaicans and Nigerians have a thing going on, especially for basketball fans, Patrick Ewan, Akeem Olajuwon. So it would be remiss of me not to say Nigeria is in the building, hello. <laughs> I give it to you. I give it to you. But green, white, green, you better put those flags in the comment section. <laughs> so um, in terms of uh, my streams of income, they are diverse. There's a law firm, of course, which is my primary focus. Um, but independent of that, with publishing, online, Lady Brill Magazine, podcasting, African Music Law Now, and Fashion ENT Law. What's interesting was I thought it would be a very direct um, stream of income. So uh, with banner ads and advertising directly on uh, my platforms, what instead happened was a lot of influencers, my goal was to get to the masses, but I kept finding out that I wasn't necessarily getting to the masses, but I was getting to the influencers that influence the masses. And they're the conference organizers. They're the, you know, have some major platforms. So I found, and where my stream of income, diversified stream of income has been, has been all of this influencers contacting me, whether it's for consulting, whether it's for um, speaking, or the other part that has led to being an educator is contacting me for, hey, can you come work with us in the, prof in the capacity of teaching, which I'm also now um, an adjunct professor teaching. So that's been my pathway in terms of the diversified streams of income. Okay, good deal, good deal. Someone just asked, uh, does this, it, will this conversation work for any genre? Uh, and and I, I I believe absolutely. Do, wouldn't you agree? Absolutely, because I'm going to tell you from a perspective of blogging to create my own book ultimately, and how that can work for any genre. Or you can use social networks, Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook, and write your own book at the same time, and then build a fan base around that. So there's so many ways that you can cover it. And if you're a thought leader, currently already talking about it, doesn't matter what industry sector, really it's just up to you to put in the work on the content, creating the content and pulling a fan base even before you get to publishing. So absolutely. Yeah, and I tell you, it's, it's endless. You know, it's interesting. We're, we're, I'm gonna bring on Kerry in just a second. And Kerry shot me, I think it might even be an ebook of his uh, last night about, uh, I think it was 18 streams of, of of income that he created from from one book, and it's it's endless. Like you know, I, I mean, half of them I didn't even consider. You know, so you're right. It's there's endless endless opportunity. So uh, Uduak, thank you. That's one big point. Um, the way the way I like to explain it is sort of the way um, I do when it comes to representing entertainment clients, or particularly entertainment clients on the music end. We all know about songs and our favorite artists, but that artist takes that song and diversifies the streams of income, whether it's merchandising, clothing, whether it's um, some sort of endorsement deal, whether it's syncing that song on, on film and music. So same concept with books, yeah? It's your intellectual property, putting it on paper. Now, what are the different variations as the sub creator that you can take to monetize that intellectual property asset? So there's so many varieties. It's just about your intellectual output to create however uh, diverse uh, streams of income that you want to create. Love it, love it. All right, so Uduwa, thank you. We'll bring you We'll bring you right back after Carrie. So thank you. I see Nigeria is definitely in the building. Definitely in the building. There you go. She lit it up. So there she is. 
Um, all right. So next up, let's bring on Carrie. And and I want to say this. One is uh, Jane. If my sis Jane is watching, uh, I, I want to give a special shout out to Jane. And, and this is how I want to bring on Carrie. And I think this is something that we could all learn. So I think Carrie is going to teach us a lesson before he even comes on. So Jane is a friend of mine. She is part of the Better With Paul tribe, right? She shot me a message just a few days ago and said, uh, you know, hey, Paul, there's this gentleman named Carrie who uh, I really like what he does. I really like what, what you do. I think the two of you should connect. There's, you know, the two of you, there's, there's, I'm sure there's something, right, that, that, that you two can do. And she shot me it, and it was from someone I respect. So immediately, I then go and I look up this Carrie. I was like, let, let me see who this Carrie dude is, right? Um, and I go online, and I was blown away. I was blown away by his story. I was blown away by what he does. I was blown away by his conviction. And I told Jane, I said, you know, I would love to connect with Carrie. I think he would bring a lot of value to uh, you know, here to the Better With Paul tribe, you know, please, you know, reach out to him. Granted, this was, I think, three or four days ago. Then Carrie slides into my DM, right? Slides into the DM. And he says simply, Paul, how can I serve your tribe? What can I do to serve your tribe? Like, what, what is it? That in itself is all you need. That, that is power with succinctness, leading with what can I do to support? Always giving value, always adding value. And this is this is how we started it. And uh, and as I continue to do more research, uh, Carrie is an absolute superstar. It's an honor to have him. This is Carrie Oberbrunner. There he goes. Hey, what is up, Paul? Great to be here today. Hey, Carrie, thank you very much. By the way, you know, uh, Carrie is in the middle of a mastermind. So he's taking his lunch break to spend with us. So, Carrie, thank you very much. I'm thrilled to be here. And uh, I did a little research on you, too, because, you know, you get these emails where you're like, you two should connect. But, man, I looked at your stuff and I was like, wow, uh, just blown away by the great compliments that you have with um, the world. So glad to be here. There you go. All right. So, Carrie, let's get right down to business. Yes. You know, I'm, I'm very curious about why you're so passionate about igniting souls, right? You've yeah. helped thousands of people to write and publish books. Yep. Why are you so passionate about this? Yeah, there's a Swiss psychologist who his name uh, is, is Carl Jung or Jun, and he did a lot of research and he looked at the most damaging thing in the life of a child. And in all of his research, I thought it was you know alcoholism, abuse, abandonment. He said that it was the unlived life of the parent. So if there's people today here that have uh, individuals that, um, you know, are looking up to them. And by the way, Paul, can you still hear me? You might, you might, you, you got me. Okay. Okay. You're just listening. All right. I'm introducing. All right. I was just checking. I was like, crap, am I talking to no one? Uh, no. But, but here's the thing. Like Carl Jung said that there's something about parents or guardians or grandparents or whatever that um, the unlived life is damaging for kids to see that. Mm -hmm. And so many of us think, you know, we got to serve our kids. We got to buy them iPhones. We got to buy them Xboxes and all this. The best thing you can do as a parent or an uncle or an aunt or a grandparent is for a young person to look at you and say, that person is fully alive. And so I believe that uh, St. Irenaeus said that the glory of God is a man or woman fully alive. I think that that's why we were put on this earth to connect to three questions. Who am I? Why am I here? Where am I going? Identity, purpose, and direction. Mm -hmm. And when those three circles converge, identity, purpose, direction, who am I? Why am I here? Where am I going? I think we're a soul on fire. And then your amazing audience, once you get that clarity around those three things, you have a message to share. And the best way to get your message out is through a book because books change lives. And I've heard for a lot of years, books are just a business card. They're not. What do you do with business cards? Anybody, you throw them in the trash. Yeah, you toss them. Yeah, but but a book, especially when you build a business around a book, man, that has wealth generations behind it. 
And I tell people it's three things. It's influence, impact, and income. It's not just the income, but it's the influence and the impact as well. Yeah, I love it. What tell tell us about all of your streams, right? Yeah. Because yeah. I see a lot of everyone is saying amen. I see all in the comments, everyone's saying amen to Carrie, right? Yeah. Carrie's preaching. Right. But but walk us just for, we, for, just so we can get a glimpse of how you've been able to monetize. Yeah. What do your streams yeah, totally. of revenue look like? So even if people are here today and they're saying, you know what, I got fiction, that's okay. You know, I got fiction too. So <laughs> you, you can even do this with a fiction book. But my former job was a charity. I worked at a church, you know, as a pastor. And and I, I realized, you know, I want to change the world just like you. You want to change the world. And so what I realized is, you know what, I took one book and this is the first book I did it with. And I turned this book into a course. And then I turned it into a keynote speech. Then I turned it into a mastermind. Then I certified people as speakers, coaches, and trainers, 300 of them all around the world. So even though I've never been to New Zealand, I have New Zealand secret name coaches. I, I turned it into a, a, a vlog. I turned it into a podcast. So literally I have a PDF, no email opt-in. I just, I'm happy to give it away for everybody, but it's literally 18 streams of income. And yeah. Paul, one that I see people don't even do that much is audio. Like audio, if people have ever listened to David Goggins, you know, yeah. that book yeah. can't hurt me. Go on, Am I dare someone to go on Amazon. You'll see 8,000 reviews, which is nuts for the physical book. And you go on Audible and it has 80,000. Wow. So it has 10, wow. you know, think about that. 90%. I mean, I can't even do math. So don't yeah. even have to do math, but it's a lot more. But the yeah. thing is that everyone's got their smartphone within five feet of them every day. That's an audiobook player. Gotcha. And so it's getting into people's ears. And we can get into how you make 70 bucks on every audiobook later on in the show. But yeah, there's just so many. It's, it's, it's endless. I mean, just out of that one book, I, I counted five that you mentioned, and I'm yeah. sure it's less than half of your revenue streams. Absolutely. And not only that, but I have it for four books. So now you take 18 streams of income times four and suddenly the coronavirus hits and you're not freaking out. You're just like, hey, right. no problem. I got this check coming in, this check coming in, not a problem. All right. So Carrie, I tell you what, you, you've warmed us up. Everyone's like, okay, let's go. Let's do it. So let me bring on Uda Walk here. Here we go. All right. And I tell you what, let's go right into it, guys, because I, I I think the, the audience is ready. And I will tell you this, is that a lot of this is personal because I know I need to write a book, right? Yeah. But I, I haven't been confident in the whole process. Mm -hmm. And I think today we'll be able to go through it. So let's look at today in three chunks. Let's look at how do we write a book? Like just real quick bitey tips to make sure that we're writing a book that will become profitable, not necessarily best selling, profitable. So that's one. Secondly, let's talk about the publishing standpoint, because just so we know, OK, how do we get the book published? And then third, let's talk about the money. Let's talk about all those streams right, that you all are talking about here. Let's talk about all of those streams so that we all walk away with insight on all. All right. So number one, for those of us who are thinking that we need to write a book, but we have no idea where to get the subject from, we have no, we have no experience. How do we know where that idea is for us to write our, our book? Okay, I, I can start first. I think listen to specifically what people keep asking you about. So for me, I'm known for law and people come to me over and over again for law. The other thing I'm known for is media relations because I have a communications degree. I've been in media for so long and have the relationships. Those two things, people come keep coming to me over and over again. That's the first thing. Secondly, what do you want to communicate to the world? So I'm going to go back to Carrie's point about identity. Identity drives practically almost everything I do. Uh, I was born in here in the States, but raised in Lagos. And while I was in Lagos, I had no idea that I was an American, not even a Nigerian. The whole time I thought I was Nigerian, but I didn't even have a green passport. It wasn't until uh, my mom took us to the U.S. Embassy annual 4th of July celebration 
that I saw her pull out a blue passport. Even my name was a nickname. So I didn't even know my full legal name. So I asked her, who is that person? And she said, it's you. Not only did she say it's you, I couldn't even pronounce Uruak for a very long time. And in fact, don't say it the way uh, the people from my region actually say it. So that's one thing. The other thing about identity for me was um, the whole issue of, um, you know, how women were viewed and girls were viewed in Nigeria at the time that I was growing up. Girls were simply not enough and they had a certain place. And it deeply affected me because my father was not in the picture at the time. So my mom, even though my parents were married, my dad was overseas, my mom was locally in Nigeria and had to raise four kids on her own in a city or and state where she's not from. So that completely affected me. So when we returned back to the US, here I was with yet another idea identity issue, which I was not going to let happen. And that identity issue was Americans trying to tell me that as Africans, I'm either uh, walking around naked somewhere in the bush or um, just this weird concept and stupid questions. And I thought, look, I already <laughs> spent the, the most part of my time in Nigeria fighting for my voice and, and identity as a girl. I'll be damned if I come to the US and have anyone try to redefine my identity as an American woman. So I refused to do that. And so I sought to define my identity, which is how the blog came, came about. And in the process of writing the blog and trying to vocalize my identity using fashion, the same tool that I thought had been used to paint Africans globally as this weird people, right? We, we don't have clothes on. Well, let me put you back in clothes. Let me show you what our runways look like. So trying to tell that identity story, that was where I merged the passion for my fashion, passion for communication and passion for law. And in the process, people kept coming and coming and coming. And over time, part of the writings became uh, contributing articles to books, four books. And in addition through that, I kept seeing my audience asking me for a book, for a book, for a book, for a book. And ultimately I've written the first ever music business and law book for the Nigerian music market. That took me four years to write. And as part of that identity issue, we have more of an oral tradition. So we don't necessarily write things, which is one of the reasons why the media has been able to control our narrative. So it took so, me. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Udo. Just, just to jump in there. So, so you're driving at identity, and identity. also what I heard you say is that when several people were asking you, you had several people ask you. Lots of people. A lot, and then you knew that was something to drive at. And Carrie, I, I've 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 watched now about five million Carrie uh, videos on YouTube. I've heard I've heard you talk about this. Is this yeah. is also a key? Yeah, she's brilliant. I love what she said. Oh, thank um, you. Yeah, no, it's it's fantastic. So think about it this way, folks. Every book solves a problem. So you, you need to realize that as a book writer, you are solving someone's problem. And uh, Paul, the purpose of your title is to hook. OK, so you want you want your book to hook the reader. So, for example, the four hour work week immediately interrupts people's brains and says, whoa, oh my gosh. Do you realize that his book was originally gonna be called The Millionaire Chameleon? Yeah. Now, <laughs> well, no one would have bought that because they don't understand what problem it's solving. But once you say the four hour work week, people say, oh, oh my gosh, I don't work four hours. How do I get that? And notice then the subtitle, this is why I wanna challenge your audience, pick a, pick a title that hooks, and a subtitle that explains the benefits. Notice this is a very powerful formula that you can steal from Tim Ferriss, okay? He uses three verbs, escape the nine to five, join the new rich, and live anywhere. So he uses escape, join, and live. And those are all three benefits that the audience wants. The other thing is that every book, all you need to do is break it down into what's called a framework. A framework is actually your chapters. So a framework is a solution broken down into simple steps. So just like, uh, how do you say your name? Uduak? Uduak. I love that. And I love the story of how you met a decade ago. But, but she, her book solves a problem. And then yeah. the table of contents is the uh, steps. It's the steps for the solution. 
Okay. And uh, later, Paul, we can talk about why you why most of your listeners should not brand themselves as a memoir author. Hmm. We'll talk about that when you when you want. Yeah, L I mean, let's let's get right into it. So, actually, let me just recap what I heard you both say already. So, Uduak is talking about what are people asking for, going to your identity, right? Then, Carrie, what I hear you saying is that the book, the the title is the hook. The subtitle explains benefits. Uh, the benefits in particular, right? Yep. The table of contents is like the yellow brick road. Yep. Okay. So, 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 so now just a quick question. What if we feel like people aren't asking us anything? Just, just where do we go with that? If pe people are not right. asking. We're a bit confused as to where do we find our topic? Well, I would say, what do you, what do you really, really, really love doing and are so good at in terms of your skill set? And then I would document step by step by step every process involved in that skill set that you really, really love. Because then you can, for example, teach an online course that Carrie was saying, for example, you can create a whole ebook and sell as a PDF. You can, you know, create an online course. You can have the residual income that uh, Carrie was talking about as well. So if you can't like figure out the first phrase of it, say, what do I really, what am I really, really skilled at, right? You, a lot of people are trainers, a lot of people are speakers. What do you keep speaking about? And on the data analytics, if you will, look at the feedback you get every time you speak on whatever the topics are that you speak. Yeah. For example, whenever I speak beyond the law topics, my uh, topic on how to create buzz uh, with the media and stay out of trouble is probably one of the most requested uh, presentations that I have. So if I were to do a PR book, for example, I would just document every single step that I've taken as a journalist and also as building my own personal brand. And I'll put that in a book and sell that. Okay. All right. Super. Uh, so then one more question on this topic. I don't want to belabor this, but this is now a personal question. Uh, what if you have several topics that yeah. the data shows that people are interested in? Uh, how do I know which topic to choose? Yeah. So I would say, uh, I'll answer that really quick. A lot of people could write books. The problem is that they make their books so watered down by, by trying to solve, you know, eight problems at once. And they say, well, you know, I, I, I could I could touch on this, this, and this. Here's what I want to challenge people to do. Your book is a certain tone, okay? So your book is your voice is a certain tone in the book. Here's something that will ver will encourage your, your listeners. You write your book as the tone of a sage, a Sherpa, or a struggler. A sage, a Sherpa, or a struggler. Folks, right now, if you struggle with something, you could actually be the author on that topic, and I'll tell you why. Because people will look at you as courageous and brave, and someone who's willing to say, I don't have it all figured out, but come with me on this journey as I figure it out. There's books that have been New York Times bestsellers like Eat, Pray, Love or Blue Like Jazz. Those books were positioned as strugglers. So everybody here struggles so they can be an author. Number two, your book could be positioned as a Sherpa. A Sherpa says, I found my way up the mountaintop. I've discovered a solution and I'm going to come down the mountaintop and give you the answers, like my book, Day Job to Dream Job. I said, look, I'm not some sage, but I found a shortcut. Let me come down the mountaintop and show you. That's a Sherpa. The last book is a sage, and that's like the Oprah Winfrey's, the Tony Robbins, where their, their face is on the cover, and they're kind of on the mountaintop, and they say, come up, everyone, sit at my feet and learn from me. And so you can actually be successful with any type of tone or voice, but you need to be authentic. Because if you are an imposter and you say, my book is a sage and people Google you and you're broke, they're going to be like, don't trust this person. Yeah. Yeah. I've okay. seen that before, Carrie. Oh, I've yeah. seen that before. <laughs> All right. So let me ask you this. This is my man, Nathan on LinkedIn, wanted to make sure that I asked this question. And that is, is what do you see as the three biggest issues people make, or should I say three biggest problems, sins, if you will, when writing our book. So basically the three biggest no-nos, you know, mm -hmm. <laughs> what are the things we should definitely not be doing? That's clearly one. If we're not a sage, don't write as a sage. But, but what are some other no-nos? Do you want to go first? Yeah. Um, 
Sure. Let me address it more from the mental standpoint, and then Carrie, probably you could detail a little, little bit more. Uh, from the mental standpoint, not believing you have a story. We all have a story, right? Um, so you have something to share, as Carrie sort of outlined how you can share it. The second part um, I would I would say is lacking confidence, and that that comes from not believing that you have something to share. So. So as a result, you lack confidence, which brings fear and then ultimately procrastinates it. And you keep saying, I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll do it. And you never get to it. Just do it. Even if it's just sitting, for example, uh, 10 minutes a day to write. Right. So when I embarked on writing the, the law book I was just talking about, I thought I would be done in two, three weeks. I've written over 10,000 articles easily uh, over the years of blogging and also just journalism work. So I thought it'd be easy. I didn't expect the kind of intense work to fact find and find information given that we don't have a history for the most part on um, you know blueprint about our industry. But generally just sit and write. And for that, I had to discipline myself early in the mornings, 5.30 to 6 or 4 to 5 a.m. It just depends. Whatever time works for you, it might be in the evening, in the afternoon, and just write. So those are the three things from a mental standpoint. And then I'll have Carrie break down more of you know, the technical side. That's good. That's good. So basically with mine, I'm going to share that I love it when authors can um, uh, write their books, but here's a mistake. I talked about memoirs. Memoirs are fine if you're famous like Paul. All right. But memoirs, I could have written this book as Carrie's secret name, one man's journey overcoming cutting because i used to be a self-injury i used to struggle with that guess how many people would have read it one my mom maybe but here here's what you want to do don't position your book as a memoir even if it is a memoir and that's not being deceitful what it's saying is market your book as what's going to solve their problem so notice it's an uncommon quest to stop pretending shed the labels and discover your true identity. You don't want your book to be all about you in terms of the back cover, the front cover, the title, the subtitle. You can, every single page has my story on it, but uh, it's not positioned like that. The other thing is people do not know how to market books, folks. Every single thing about my book is to get them to the next step. In other words, I have what's called back ads. Folks, you need to have back ads. Notice, at the back of my book, it says, here are your next steps. So when I write a book, I think, what do I want people to do at the end of this book? And that's where I actually build in marketing, not high sales, not spammy, but it's saying, if you love this book, here's the next step. And then I give them a pathway. We call that a buyer's journey. And the book is just the top of the funnel. It's not the end. You don't want them to finish and say, oh, great, I read a book. You want them to say, wow. I look at Paul and I see, or or you, you Daka. I'm do I? sorry, man. I'm learning. Yeah. I'm learning. <laughs> I, tell people, I tell people I'm a bald guy with a girl's name. That that that's how people remember me. But but you know they know now about her brand and business at the end. Yeah, I love it. I love it. These are all good from the mentality. Uh, I mean, this this is really good. Let's move to publishing. Okay? Yes. Um, because so, so here's a question that I ask myself all the time. All right, so self-publish, or do we still try to go after a, a, a you know, a, traditional, a traditional right now? What's your quick take on that, especially in this climate? Well, I'll speak from personal experience. So the contributing books gone, right? The, been done. Uh, they're made, published by major publishers. When it came to mine, and then I've had some you know, stuff, but relating more to the magazine end. But for this book, I didn't want to sell, I didn't want to go the traditional route only because I felt like I would not be practicing what I preach with some of my uh, clients. I wanted to make sure that I practice what I preach, which is if I go on the traditional route, I know that Number one, they don't know my market. They don't know the African market as well as I do. They don't have the relationships with all the media people as well as I do, uh, among other things. So they can't market and sell. And I probably will be giving up 80%, at mm -hmm. least 80%, or maybe 60 to 80%, depending on the negotiations of my royalties. For what? Right? Because you're supposed to bring that marketing and promotions behind me. And then I'm ending with a lot less. So it didn't make sense to me. So I knew I would self-publish. However, I've sacrificed a lot 
when you're trailblazing a path, you tend to sacrifice a lot. I've sacrificed a lot of income, time, the whole nine yards to, to uh, write this book. So for me, I wasn't going to come out of pocket. I needed someone, a, a sponsor, a company or whatever to jump on as uh, to handle the marketing and promotions because before COVID-19, the goal was to go around all these different African countries and market and promote. So I had several persons jump on a several brands and when it seemed like we were ready to go, so it was going to be published via ebook, I mean, sorry, via um, self-published route, et cetera. But when it was seemed like we were ready to go on that marketing and promotions money that's necessary for the for the campaigns and the TV and the radio and all that stuff, uh, unfortunately, they were not able to get that funding. And so I wasn't able to move forward with it because I wanted to really strategically position the book. So at this point for me, it's going to be self-publishing and it's going to be self-publishing through specifically um the, the, the method we have, probably Amazon, I'm going to go that route because it just makes sense because now I don't have to spend as much money when it comes to marketing and promoting with the travels and expenses and everything else. So that's my experience. Oh, yeah. so me, I mean, I'll tell you what, I love it. I'll tell you what, I want to publish you <laughs> because your, your, your story is fantastic. I'm going to ask um, if I can share my screen super quick, Paul, if I can't uh, let me know. But anyway, um, yeah, if, if, you, if you if you as long as you have that option, go ahead and share it. Absolutely. Okay. See my screen. Yeah, there it is. OK, I'll, okay. I'll you can it for traditional you. publishing and self-publishing. OK, can you see that? There you go. So traditional publishing. Listen, I've been traditionally published six times. And I know from experience that she is exactly right. You lose 85% of your profits and you also lose control. They said, no, 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 we're not going to put that cover. No, no, no. Your title's not going to be that. With self-publishing, you lose expertise and opportunity. And I have this really quick slide that I want to show you. I'll tell you what, man, this is fantastic. Um, the slide, let me stop sharing. Yeah. My we can see all into his computer. I don't mind. I got I got no secrets. Yeah, but let, me, let me tell you this though. If you go with Amazon, just real quick, here, here's the negativity. Because mm. we talked about uh self-publishing, we talked about traditional publishing. There's a third way. Interesting. Okay, here's the negatives about Amazon. Number one, no hardcover books. Number two, no soft cover pre-sales. Pre imagine them, imagine them trying to do a movie and promote it and they say we can only promote it the day of that's what amazon does amazon does not let you self-publish pre-sale physical books number three jeff bezos puts on the back of every barcode of a, of a create space or kdp book KDP, yeah. non-returnable so what what jeff bezos does nothing against them but he says we don't want bookstores to be able to buy this because they take our cut so they put on there a barcode that says non-returnable the bookstores scan that and they say, we're not going to carry this in our brick and mortar. A couple other ones. You'll never get foreign translation deals. I love the Nigeria emphasis here. I love the international audience you have. You want to be able to get the international translation rights. This is all not available through KDP. No marketing, no advanced reader copies. So you can't get more than five and they have a nasty stripe that says not for sale. That means you're not going to get endorsements and forwards from big time people because you can't get your book out advanced reader copy. It stands for ARC. You'll never get on iBooks, uh, Apple Store or uh, Nook. Why? Because Nook and Amazon are Coke and Pepsi and Barnes and Noble and Nook do not play with Amazon. Folks, this is why there's a third way. And that's why I'm passionate with our model. You get. I get no profits. So literally all your royalties are yours and all your intellectual property is yours. I'm just trying to show Paul that there is a third way. It doesn't have to be traditional. It doesn't have to be self. Our company's called Author Academy Elite and uh, it really works with influencers who want the best of both worlds. Okay, and I'm gonna make sure Carrie that we get that information out so that everyone, because I'm sure there's 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 going to be heavy interest in that. And yeah. also, by the way, I love this. Carrie and Uduak, this is good. Yeah. Sure. Man. Publish already. Man. By she the is. way, a quick question though. Every yeah. business at some point needs to be profitable. So how are you making your profit? Yeah. We have a we have a tuition 
that uh, is a one-time fee. And okay. basically then what it does is it produces the book, gets it in 39,000 channels around the world, but it puts the writer first because they're the decision maker and they're the one that can choose the title, subtitle, all these things. Gotcha. Okay. Quick Sounds question good. on publishing, <laughs> folks, and then let's jump into multiple streams of income. Sure. Uh, this is my guy, Brandon. He asked this. I love this because right now, right, I'm in London. I'm loving the UK. I may never even come back to the United States. Uh, <laughs> he wants no. to know about <laughs> self-publishing and printing your book overseas. And this is yeah. a great example, Uduak, with your book and thinking about uh, publishing outside of the United States. So what are your recommendations for this? Well, let me tell you what my experience was. Um, so I have some really amazing legal colleagues that have published books like excellent music business and law books um, in the US market. And I'm part of very, a very strong network um, of those lawyers. So one of the first things obviously is they wanted to refer me to their publishers and they did refer me to their publishers. But what was interesting, and I still had on the back of my mind, probably not gonna sign on because of the reasons I already told you, but when I um, contacted those publishers, their concerns were sort of what Carrie was saying, which is, well, you know, Nigeria, Africa, you know, translation issues, they don't speak English and all this other thing. So um, what I found ultimately was that I had to just say, you know what, I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna go this a specific route of, this is just how I'm going to do it essentially. I hope that answers your question, uh, Paul, does that, specifically answer your question or yeah that that does but to get at brandon because i know brandon well right yeah. my usa today buddy right wow. I think he's basically saying look i want to publish my book overseas nationally oh okay and, so yeah so, yeah so he so wants to so publish overseas okay so i have for for publishing overseas i have as a contributing author um i had a publisher reach me out of south africa to ask for you know, me to, to write. And so I was able to do that and it was published in South Africa and is sold in South Africa. And then in recent times, um, that network of very high profile attorneys um, uh, are part of an international attorney group um, that is a part of Medium. Medium is like a music business for on an international scale for, for the industry. And so they also reached out and had me contribute to a book that is sold internationally as well. So I think you have to look specifically for international publishers that deal directly with the kind of content that you're trying to put out. Those, those have been my two experiences as contributing authors. So for me, basically, KDP, nothing against them, but that's where everybody goes in the beginning and they kind of think KDP is the answer. I'm just telling you folks, all my research, all this, all the studies I've done, they have little fine print, which means that they own your files. Although you own your content, they own the design file. Folks, this is why Amazon's the richest company in the world, one of the richest, and why Jeff Bezos is the richest man on the planet. They don't put authors first. With our publishing or any publishing, ask him, I'm not pushing ours, ask him who owns the design file because that is the key term and what we do with our authors is we basically do the interior design we do the cover design then we give them the design files and here's the cool thing paul all your international people they can take those design files and there are companies in any other country who works with the design files. Mm -hmm. So even though we get our authors in 39,000 channels around the world, Waterstones for the UK, Chapters Indigo for Canada, what we also do is gift them those design files so that if they are in Australia and books can be bought for a cheaper price, they can just work with a local printer and get those books immediately. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Uh, my sister Jamila Bannister on LinkedIn just said, an author should never rely on Amazon only to distribute your book. Amazon is only interested in their own business. I exactly. think the common theme here is that they are a business, right? Yeah. And we have to remember yeah. that as such. Yeah, and you have to remember your marketing and promotional efforts. It's like what I tell artists, you put your music on Spotify, that's yet a distribution channel, but it's not gonna make you money. You've gotta mm -hmm. still employ the marketing and promotions, which is why I'd said, hey, I need someone to jump on this monetarily because I'm not coming out of pocket for this, but you still, even if it's on Amazon or Spotify, whatever, 
that content is. You still need to to lift your marketing and promotions, which is where the media relations come in and the, the radio, the TV, the, the digital publishers and traditional publishers, because they're sure. going to help you get the word out. And so you have to make sure you're building that relationship with them as well. So Uduak, on that point, I want to, and I want to uh, be careful because Kara, I know you only have eight minutes with us. I'm going to ask yeah. one question on distribution, right? And then we're going to roll right into streams, right? Multiple income streams. So what is your number one, number one marketing hack, if you will, or marketing tip or marketing strategy once the book is published? Yeah. Number one, if you only had one thing to do, what would it be? You ready? Yeah, so, go ahead. oh, go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. Okay. So there's this term called newsjacking. Okay. Now hear, hear me out. I launched my book with the Shawshank celebrities at the 20th and 25th reunion for the Shawshank Redemption. Why? Because nobody cares about my book. I'll just be honest, folks. If you're watching this, I'm going to be a tough coach on you today. Nobody cares about your book. And you might say, oh, you just, you just ruined my life. No, no, no. What they care about is how your story connects with what's going on in media. So okay. I shared how day job is like Shawshank and how dream job is like Zihuatanejo. And now all of a sudden I news jacked the entire Shawshank cult. And now they brought me on into the LA Times, New York Times as a featured author about the 20th and 25th re reunion. So I would tell people like right now, don't just go to media to pitch your book, news jack what's going on in pop culture and show how your book is the bridge between that conversation. Yeah, and, and let me speak from this perspective of the media and PR person receiving all those releases. Um, and usually the release will say something with the headline of Carrie Lunches, a book with Shawshank, uh, Redemption or Dream Job or whatever, a headline that captivates me. So what I will say on the back end is try to work with, I would say, a publicist um, that can help you craft your story really well in order to basically hack that headline of what's going on in pop culture. And that will really allow you to gain attention. And I know for me, even with uh, blogging and blogging, that's been one of the primary ways, primary ways I've been able to position myself as a thought leader. If you go to particularly my music business and law, I'm not just talking about any topic, I'm talking about what's happening in pop culture and all the different things people are doing. So the Teddy Riley case, for example, um, I would address it from the legal standpoint of the whole Teddy Riley and babyface battle uh, that the first time that it didn't work out or anything that's going on. And I would find out over and over again, even sometimes the celebrities will call my office saying, you wrote about me. I mean, I'm talking Hollywood celebrities really bothered about uh, articles I was writing because, and of course on the African continent as well, because I was able to look at what was going on in pop culture and just hack that headline as part of my description and then also the body of what I talk about. So absolutely, Carrie, I think that's that's a great tip. And I would I, I would agree with that as well. A, a lot of people are loving the, the news jacking, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna call, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna call mine news jack swing. Oh, I like that. Right, right. <laughs> News <laughs> Jack Swing. That's what I'm doing. All right. So now let's talk about multiple streams of income, right? Because I, I was I was starting to basically drool, Carrie, at the beginning when you said I have this book and then I flipped it into these five different things. Yeah. So so walk us through all of the streams of income. And Carrie, I know you only have uh four minutes with us. So Carrie, yeah. you go walk us through how yeah. All of the streams, if you yeah. could. And you, the PDF yeah, link. you share that PDF because it's got like literal illustrations for each one. And again, no email opt-in. Everybody can can enjoy that. But let me just go through the uh, the 18 streams of income. The first five, are, people are going to be like, duh, but then hang with me, okay? So I'm getting my slide here. I'm getting it because I don't want to miss any of them. Otherwise, people are going to get mad. All right, here we go. So number one, audiobook. Audiobook has something with audible where you get a bounty link and when you share your audible book online and social media if it has your bounty link and people click it they now get guess what they get a free audible subscription for 30 days if they stay 61 days you get 70 bucks for every time somebody does that so that means 10 people download your audiobook for free 
start an Audible subscription, they stay 61 days, you made $700. 100 people do it, 7,000. 1,000 people do it, 70,000. Again, most people don't know that. So audiobook, ebook, hardcover, soft cover, EPUB, and I say that differently because there's Nook, which is called an EPUB file, and there's Mobi, which is called a Kindle file. You want both. Kindle just wants you, but then you'll never be on the iTunes store. Number six, you can turn your book into a mastermind. I do that all the time. I have a $10,000 mastermind that I got to jump back to in about three minutes. But these people are all buying into the book and then we do the mastermind. So I could have done a dream job mastermind or Udaqua could have done a music industry mastermind. Number seven, self-study online coaching program where it's passive income. You go to bed at night, people sign up for your, for your book course, right? The course on your book and it's passive. They can do this through Teachable and Thinkific. That's where they put their videos. Number eight is a live coaching program. Number nine is certification. So I certify people on all my books. They get my PowerPoints. They get my handouts. Why? Because my book goes into countries all over the world. They keep their profit, but they pay to join my team. Number 10, you can do paid webinars around your book. Number 11, paid conference calls. Number 12, keynote speaking. Number 13, live conferences. Number 14, sorry, 13 live seminars, 14 conference, 15 workshop immersion. Paul, I literally took a group of people to Shawshank Prison and we had at Shawshank Prison a dream job workshop in the prison cells. 16 high-end consulting, 17 podcasting built all around your book. You can have sponsors or you can actually podcast. And then number 18 is vlogging, video blogging, the same thing, sponsors, or you can uh, uh, actually do the content on, on the vlog. Carrie, I love it. A lot of people are asking, for, they were like, can you slow down? This is all in, in Carrie's PDF. Yes. Yeah. I only recommend no email, no email required. There you go. Carrie, I know you have one minute with us. Thank you so much for joining during your mastermind lunch. How can we support you? What's one thing that we can do to support you for all this content you've given us? I'll tell you what, write a book. Like the way you support me is to get your message out. And if you need help, carryoverbrunner.com slash book. It's a literal uh, evergreen masterclass where I teach exactly what's self-publishing, what's traditional publishing, this third way, how to turn your book into 18 streams of income. You are awesome, Paul. Your guest is beautiful and she's got a beautiful message, so. There you go. All right, one one quick question, Carrie. Last question before you get out of here. How do you pronounce her name? Yudiqua. <laughs> oh man, is it? So good. So good. Oh, you know, Eddie, in the comments, everyone's like, I love this, but I don't think he'll ever get it her oh, name. Oh man, dude. <laughs> that, listen, I'm human. I'm human. Yeah, I'll tell you what, Carrie, man. Oh, somebody, I love said that somebody said the PDF is broken. Um, check it out. I don't know. Let's let's check. All right. If all right, if I tell you what, if I don't know if you have someone on your team that could check real quick, or if someone else could check, but Carrie, I'll work it out. You go back to your mastermind. All Thank right, you man. very much. I love you, man. Sure. Thank you very much. All right. See you. All right. See you. All right. That was Carrie Overbrunner right there. He broke <laughs> my name. I've never heard my name said that way ever. Uduak. Uduak. Oh yeah. my God. I tell you, I tell you what, it's tough. And what I know too is because uh I I remember I I once did a uh I did a video on Lovey, right? Oh yeah, Lovey Ajayi. Yeah. Yeah, and I I love Lovey. So I did this video where I broke down her brand and I didn't pronounce her name, you know, <laughs> appropriately. And I'm gonna tell you what. Nigeria was on me. Yeah, it was I know. Like, Nigeria it was like I had a hundred million people knocking about there, like, how ah, you mess up her name like that. Um, but I tell you what, I want to respect your time too. Yeah. So yeah. if you what what I really love about your story, right? Mm -hmm. Beyond the I love how you have created multiple streams, multiple streams, right? So in the beginning, you broke down your different streams. But could you just give everyone a quick replay? 
on your streams. And, and what I love, I think most about your streams is they all seem to be interdependent from the mm -hmm. standpoint of as one goes up, as you get visibility in one area, they all rise, yeah. right? Yeah. So if you could just break down the interdependence of those just quickly, and then how can we support you? What can okay. we do to support you? Well, maybe I should start with what to do to support. Uh, I think uh, Carrie just went through 18 streams of income and that's all content. And anytime you're doing content, it's all intellectual property, which means you need a lawyer to literally draft a lot of those contracts, negotiate those things, whether you're offering an online call, a course, a podcast, it doesn't matter. You're going to need a lawyer. I'd be interested in seeing how Carrie sort of navigated that because that's a lot of content he's producing. So make sure you have counsel in place. Um, of course, there are other things you need to be worried about as well. So in supporting me, go to Ms. Uduak, M-S-U-D-U-A-K.com and you see the services that I offer, get in touch. I look forward to, in some shape or form, helping you realize your dream, whether it's publishing uh, book content or whatever that content may be that you're looking to publish. Now, in terms of my monetization and stream of income, like I said, I expected it to be direct, but I've learned to be flexible because uh, some of the few people that came on at the time that I was doing in terms of blogging and blogging were getting income directly, right? So through banner ads and, sponsors on their site. But what I found was that even though my in initial intended audience was only directly to the masses, over and over again with every brand that I've built, and I guess it's somewhat of a extension of my personality in life, I was attracting the influencers. So the people that influence the masses literally, and they needed to be nurtured and poured into, and they were coming to me for consulting services, for speaking services, or legal representation. So that's how I've been able to monetize. And it's taken me so many places internationally and locally. And the final part is the education part that I talked about, which is even a request in my services, my services as an educator, which um, in recent times I've been teaching at the Academy of Art, uh, based on everything that I've learned online with blogging and blogging as a whole, and uh, I also was able to craft the first ever fashion law course for Sacramento State. So really, you can have different direct streams of income or it can come in directly. Just be flexible and understand your personality and yourself. If you're positioned as a thought leader, it might not come the way you typically uh, would expect it to come. Yeah, there you go. Uduak, that was, that was poetry. That was, that was definitely poetry. Um, I wanna say, that there has been a lot of people who have commented specifically about your your strategy around newsjacking with the publicist. Yes. That was brilliant. I've never ever heard, like I've heard of newsjacking before, but newsjacking with the publicist, that should be the newsjack swing right there. That's Absolutely. newsjack swing right there with the publicist. Absolutely. <laughs> and, ha and I'm happy, again, if you go on missudwak.com, happy to work with you on that. Um, and like I said, that public relations request and consulting is something that I get a lot. And that's, you got to be very strategic about how you write the news and what the media wants and how you really newsjack that headline to get their attention. There you go. Yeah. Well, thank you. This has been awesome. This has been awesome. This, this, is, this is one of those where I'm going to watch the replay now just to hear what you all said. I've, I was writing down notes, but this is good motivation because I needed that push. So I'm not thinking about anybody else. I'm just thinking about me. I needed that that push. Oh, I thought you wrote a book though, right? Didn't you write a book? That, that, that was 2010. Okay. 2010. Yeah, I remember that book. Yeah. It went, yeah. it went, it got a lot of publicity as well. Yeah, it did. But but I but you know what my biggest challenge has been quite honestly mm -hmm. is that I have three areas that I'm super passionate about, right? So I'm passionate about relationships and dating, but it's kind of evolved to now I'm passionate about how do you keep the relationship? Because so many of us think about, oh, it's just getting to, but no, no, how do you sustain it? So that's one. Secondly is I love to talk about entrepreneurship. I just love it like all day. I, I could talk about it. And then the third is, is I like to talk about just living our best life. You know, there's so many things that we, so it's three things and I'm always bouncing back. Oh, which one should I write? I never know, uh, but this has helped me. This has helped me. Yeah, I think with, with that point also, let me underscore this because I know for creative talents like me as well and you and many others watching this, we're often told to 
pick one thing and focus on it and you seem confused and all those other things. And so I think COVID-19, there's some positives that have come out of it. And one positive is to show the world that, you know what, that person you said, just pick one thing and do one thing and let your entire existence, even though you're a bigger person than, the, than I mean, like you're called to the world to be great and to do so much more. However, we're going to limit you to what you learned in an institution and it has to be one skill set of which you're going to be there forever and make your money exclusively from that. We've seen that maybe the people who treat themselves as sub creators and have all this different intellectual property products they're spinning out, maybe they were right after all. Yeah. So you having those three different talents is a great thing. Tap into it, see if they merge together. And if they don't merge together, feel free to have them isolate, you know, isolate uh, them and, 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 and monetize them the best way you can. But don't feel like it has to be that one skill because I think a lot of us believe that and then we end up feeling like we're not enough and we are not enough to move forward with writing a book or whatever the case may be. So don't limit yourself is the point. Mm. To. You're preaching now. Preach it <laughs> at the end. This is what I need the collection plate. There's always a time in these sessions where I need a collection plate. It was at that moment. Good <laughs> walk. Thank you. Thank you. I know Thank everyone's you. going to go. Thank you, everyone. I really appreciate you all taking the time out of your schedule to watch this and, and give us your attention. Yeah, look look at the comments. They're saying that you're preaching. They say that you're preaching. So thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much. Everybody, uh, goodbye. 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 I tell you, I feel you know what, what the the beauty here here's the beauty of doing this is that I know that this content is serving you, right? I know this content is serving you, but honestly, it's serving me too. This feels like soul food right now. This feels so good. Uh so that's all I have to say is thank you. That's it. I wanted to make sure we got in and, and out real business like today. I want you, I want to say a couple of things in closing. One is I want to thank Carrie. I want to thank Uduak. I I, uh, I, I think they, they gave us a lot today. Secondly is I've noticed a lot of people uh, share uh, the video, which I love. And I want to encourage you to share. I mean, not only does it help to grow our audience, which is always good, but you're also adding value because these guests come on and they spit fire. Like they all spit fire, session after session after session. So make sure that you get that out uh, into the community. Um, the other thing that I wanna say is this right here. I gotta go back to this just real quick is knowledge share is something that came about as a way for us all to connect. We are now in our third week of knowledge share we have several experts who have already received jobs as a result of it. We have countless people who have received expertise that they never thought they would get for free as a result of this. It has been an incredible success. Like all the data, like I see the product market fit is essentially there. So we're going to be moving to the next phase of knowledge share over the next few weeks. So I just want to say, A, thank you. But B, be sure that you get on this list, right? Because there's so much great talent out here. You know, people like Kit Peng, who uh, was one of our guests, he's on here. People like Deb, uh, who who was uh, uh, two guests ago, uh, we have, or maybe, no, no, last week, uh, 202 Deb, we have Chris, we have Christy Rutherford, actually all of our, our previous guests from the last session, they're all on here, giving up free hours, some of them upwards to 10 hours of their time just to sit and talk to you. I mean, imagine talking to Uduak or Carrie, just, hey, on the phone, hey, give me some advice for, for an hour. This is this is what Knowledge Share is about. So please get on this. It's a great way to connect and we're going to continue to grow this. Uh, and then the last thing that I want to say is tribe. I so adored the tribe that we had. So every Monday, remember it's Mentor Monday every Monday. I'm gonna bring on a fresh tribe. So we're gonna have another tribe. So get ready. So here's your warning, get ready for Monday. Get whatever you need, get right, right? Get the fresh cut fellas, whatever you need at home so that you can come on on Monday. And then every Friday we have Guest Expert Friday. Next Friday, I'm, I'm hosting a massive town hall. It's a massive town hall. We're going to have more guests. It's going to be incredible. Uh, you don't want to miss it. So next week is going to be an exciting week. That's all I have to say. I appreciate it. Uh, let me let me let me go to LinkedIn. My man, I see my man Ron Foster. By the way, Ron Foster from Tribe, National Geographic photographer, is on Knowledge Share. 
just on to give his advice, right? Um, Houston M, what's going on? I see you. Lillian Long, Teresa Royal Brown, what's up? Danita Price, I see you. Let me go to let me go to Facebook real quick. I see my sis Kim is in here. My man Chris Cooper is in here. Chris Cooper is on Knowledge Share. There you go. Chris Cooper's on Knowledge Share. Uh, I see my man Casey Eggleston. I got to get Casey on Knowledge Share. Casey is a phenomenal coach. Tanny, that's right. Mentor Mondays are back. I see everybody on here. You know, Ann Thornley Brown, she's on Knowledge Share. By the way, her listing is blowing up on Knowledge Share, right? I see it. She's on Knowledge Share. So I just want to say, someone said you couldn't sign up. Uh-oh. If you can't sign up for Knowledge Share, then message me. Send me an email, paul at paulcbrunson.com. I will get you on today, paul at paulcbrunson.com. All right. Everyone, have a phenomenal day. Phenomenal weekend. Remember, it's a blessing that we are all here. I know this is a trying time. Do your best to get better. Right. And that's the reason why we do this better with Paul. The whole idea is we will be better when the lockdowns are over. We're going to come out the gate strong. We will be better. Um, so blessings. And I'll see you good people.